Let not just the doors of our churches be open, but our hearts be open to include all, not only the ones who believe in the Christian faith, but the ones who do not. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hello and welcome to Devya Vachan, the Sunday Scripture Reflection Series. We have Reverend Father Santosh Mendonsa bringing the good news to us. This episode is a reflection for the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, to love the name of the Lord and to be His servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today I wish to reflect with you on the first reading for the 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Isaiah 56 verses 1 and 6 and 7. I believe, like the Gospel for today, the first reading has an important message for our times. It poses a question before us. How inclusive or universalistic are we in accepting people of other faiths or the ones who do not live the Christian way of life? Let us put this first reading in a historical perspective. In 722 BC, the Assyrians destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel. The theological reason given was that the northern kingdom was unfaithful to the covenant of God as they stitched alliances with foreign powers, thereby not trusting in the mighty hand of God who had promised them protection from the hands of their enemies. Now, in the southern kingdom, Prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah are warning the people of Jerusalem that they will face the same fate as the northern kingdom if they are not obedient to the covenant of God. Moreover, the prophets tell them to practice justice and righteousness. Unfortunately, the Israelites in the southern kingdom too fail to obey the covenant. In fact, in 587 BC, the Babylonians come and raise the city of Jerusalem to the ground. They destroy the temple of Je at Jerusalem and the Israelites are taken into exile to Babylon. But all hope is not lost. God raises Cyrus the Great, the Persian king in 539 BC who frees the Jerusalem exiles and promises them to bring back, to bring them back to the land of Israel. It is in this context, it is in this imminent return of the exiles to Jerusalem that the first reading is situated. The Trito Isaiah tells the people, do justice practice righteousness for the deliverance of God is at hand. Interestingly, the Hebrew word that is used for righteousness and the deliverance is the same word sadeka, which implies a word play, meaning that righteousness or sadeka is the mighty act of God and the upright way of life that is the appropriate human response. So dear brothers and sisters, 
how are the Israelites to practice this justice and righteousness? Well, in the exilic and the post-exilic times, it was difficult to practice assimilation, for it hindered the promises of blessings and salvation. We find this so overtly mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3, where the Lord warns that no Amorite or no Moabite should be part of the assembly of God. So what principle is mentioned in our first reading taken from Isaiah 56, 1 and 6 to 7 that overrides this long-standing custom among the Israelite society? Well, the Lord here says, for the foreigner to be welcomed, to be included in the community of God, he is to practice the Sabbath. He is to be obedient to the covenant of God. In fact, the inclusion of the foreigner is so persuasive that the Lord says that his sacrifices will be accepted at my altar and they will become the Lord's servant ministering as priests in his assembly. It even goes further. Universalism and inclusive inclusivity is so enriched that the Lord says that my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Dear brothers and sisters, when God enters history, it changes. The question is, however, how are the humans going to respond to this new reality? Well, some may say that it would be naive to open the doors of our churches wide open for an enemy would come and destroy the communion that we share with each other. Well, what God really wishes us is vulnerable openness. Let's imagine the same situation of the first Christians who accepted the Gentiles into their community. The spiritual and social dangers inherent in a closed society are far greater than those in an open society, especially with regards to a community of faith. Well, you may say that there are no real distinctions based on caste, color or creed. Surely, with regards to membership in the church, there are no differences. But with regards to James chapter 2 verses 1 to 7, are there no differences with regards to our dress, our custom, the color, the way of life that we live? Are there no differences that we make in our churches? Well, when St. Paul preaches to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, he says that God shows no partiality. If anyone wishes, freely wishes to follow the Lord, the Lord welcomes him. The gospel today too gives us the similar message. The Jews and the Canaanites were sworn enemies and yet Jesus today in the gospel heeds the anguish or listens to the prayer of a Canaanite woman. He says to her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you wish. Well, dear brothers and sisters, let us let not just the doors of our churches be open, but our hearts be open to include all, not only the ones who believe in the Christian faith, but the ones who do not. And yet, for we are called to build a society that, it, that is inclusive and assimilative based on the teachings of God. Amen. Join me next Friday at 6 p.m. to experience the goodness of God.